At the center, Godzilla Minus One is a story about Koichi Shikishima, a kamikaze pilot who found himself in a terrifying situation during World War II that end up abandoning his mission, fearing for his life, seeking a shelter at a remote base where he encounters the monster Godzilla for the first time. The name Shikishima is a reference to the squadron that conducted the first successful kamikaze attack that was called the Shikishima Squadron which was led by Lieutenant Yukio Seki that hit and sank the USS St. Lowe in 1944. And the name Koichi was a nod to Koichi Kawakita, the special effects director of the late 80s and 90s Godzilla films. Now, to fully appreciate how Godzilla Minus One brings back this iconic character, we must look back at the origins of Godzilla in Ishiro Honda's 1954 classic, Gojira. Released in the aftermath of World War II, the film used Godzilla as a metaphor for the devastation of the atomic bombings on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. At the time, Honda powerfully conveyed Japan's cultural anxiety towards nuclear weapons through this striking miniature effects. However, Godzilla was not entirely to blame for the destruction. The film acknowledges he was mutated by American hydrogen bomb tests, painting him as much a victim of atomic weaponry as the Japanese people, rather than making him a one-dimensional villain. Upon returning home and learning that his parents died in an American air raid on Tokyo, Shikishima becomes riddled with survivor's guilt and feels that he is unworthy of his life. The government and military are also unwilling to do much to stop Godzilla, leaving the civilians to fend for themselves. And this is nod to the after effects of World War II, where Japan was forced to disarm, unable to form an army, or build military equipment under orders from the United States. This finally ended in 1951. So, moving forward, Shikishima's internal journey of overcoming this guilt is what the movie's story revolves around. With the government unable to stop Godzilla's rampage, civilians take matters into their own hands. Shikishima's friend, Dr. Kenji Noda, gives an impassioned speech criticizing Japan's wartime leaders for disregarding citizens' lives. And in a pivotal moment, Noda proposes defeating Godzilla, not through violence, but a scientific plan carried out without weapons and risking no human sacrifices, where Shikishima manages to lead Godzilla into the trap and gets the kill shot, proving his own bravery. The original 1954 Godzilla featured compelling human drama, such as Dr. Daisuke, who as a scientist develops a super weapon called the Oxygen Destroyer to use against Godzilla. However, Dr. Daisuke realizes some discoveries are too dangerous to allow, as the Oxygen Destroyer's power could be a temptation for others to replicate as a weapon, to ensure the Oxygen Destroyer can only be used against Godzilla and prevent further catastrophes, Dr. Daisuke destroys his research. He then commits the ultimate sacrifice, using the weapon to kill Godzilla before dying alongside his creation. This nuanced portrayal of grappling with scientific consequences was thought-provoking for 1954, especially after the effect of the atomic bomb. It's also where the movie got its title, Minus One, as it refers to the fact that Japan had already been devastated by World War II, brought down to zero, and with the emergence of Godzilla, it puts the country to minus one. On a deeper level, the film uses Godzilla as a metaphor to examine Japan's cultural psyche. Where the 1954 original represented an external nuclear threat, this version symbolizes the country's own self-destructive tendencies instilled after years of war. By having Noda defeat Godzilla without costing lives, the movie argues survival alone can be heroic. It powerfully shows giving up one's life shouldn't be seen as most important. This directly challenges the fatalistic mindset that long plagued Japan. <laughs>